So today is one of the most important lessons you'll learn. We're looking today at lag and lots and lots of golfers are obsessed with lag and rightly and wrongly so in many ways. So lag is going to give us obviously the ability to deliver the club with more shaft lean, more pressure on the ball, ball on turf and create a little bit more power. But essentially a lot of people create lag the wrong way and a lot of people really struggle to create lag. It's probably the hardest thing I see to be able to change in students on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're going to look really at the angle form between the shaft and the lead arm. That is what we would class as the lag angle, how we create the right amount of that in the downswing. And I'm going to share with you a game-changing drill that's going to allow you to be able to improve that lag position if you struggle with it. And I would say most average golfers to poor golfers would struggle in creating the right amount of lag in the downswing. Keep watching to learn how. So we're looking at today the lag angle. So this angle here, this kind of L shape as we describe it. And what we see with a lot of average golfers to poor golfers is the hands will accelerate too early in a casting motion, widening this gap as we start down. Now what that causes through impact is either a lot of loft presented to the golf club, or they'll hit the ground before the golf ball. Certainly a lack of power because the speed, if you think about it, is being generated mostly way before the golf ball. Now, most elite ball strikers will have what we would describe as a later hit. That's the terminology that's used a lot of the time by golfers. But essentially what we're doing is creating a more of an angle, lag angle here, which helps produce our trail elbow and trail wrist into better dynamics. And then that allows us to get the club accelerating in more this last phase of the downswing. So it is accelerating later. Therefore, the handle stays more ahead. So we managed to keep the club face into a, a squarer position. Some people might even say more an open position, but we certainly wanted to rotate as well to stop it staying open. But certainly uh, that kind of closing pattern as opposed to a scooping closing pattern, it's much more of a kind of drag and rotating pattern. And if we do it correctly, create that right lag angle, lots of other things follow. As I said to you, it really helps how our trail elbow mechanics work through the golf ball, which is a big thing you see with most golfers they don't do correctly. So how do we create more lag? How do we feel the right amount of lag and so on? Now I've done videos before talking about lag in terms of if you swing the golf club on a flatter plane on the way down compared to a more upright plane, the lag angle looks visually more <sighs> more lag created. So the visuals from that, from a 3D perspective, look that way. So swinging it on a flatter or a shallower plane will make you look like you have more lag. And automatically what happens then is you get more body rotation, which means you deliver and hang on to the lag angle better as a natural occurrence. So swinging it on a flatter plane is definitely a help. Today we're gonna to focus on really is your thumbs. So what we see with a lot of golfers is when they accelerate the hands early, the pressure in the thumbs becomes greater and they throw the club away like this by pushing their thumbs out. So what I want you to do as an exercise is lift your thumbs off the handle and as we swing down, feel like the club works towards the thumbs, the shaft works to the thumbs rather than the thumbs pushing towards the shaft. Even just hitting shots with the thumbs off the club will help as well. So I'd probably say the phases we would go through is hit some shots with the thumbs off the club, then try and get the shaft or the handle or the grip to work towards the thumbs in the downswing, giving us a sense of creating that lag. Now, it's vitally important when we try and create lag, we do not cup this lead wrist too much and we do not spread these elbows too much. If we get the lag in the right place and the elbows stay nice and squeezed, then we get the real dynamics of getting the elbow in the right directional point of view and it also then means you get the right mechanics of elbow and wrist into the golf ball for that ball and turf contact. So we really want to feel that we're doing it the right way. Let's try a ball with my thumbs off the club now. So just let the club, the thumbs throw throughout the whole swing. Okay, felt very weird. Don't often hit shots with my thumbs off the club. 
but hopefully when we watch the video back, we'll see that I create a nice bit of lag. And again, lag is something I generally don't struggle with too much, if I'm honest. But for the guys that really push from the top with those hands, this will give you a massively different sensation. And if you practice with this more than you do normal shots, on the practice ground, you will start to get that change of lag. As I said, all I want you to be very acutely aware of is you don't let the elbows part and the wrist cup too much when you're doing it. So lots and lots of practice swings, thumbs off the shaft, trying to get the feeling of the club head to be above your head as you get your lead arm or your hand roughly about hip high. That's the kind of position we're looking for. That's the checkpoint. And ideally doing that with these elbows squeezed at the same time. If you can do that, you'll become a massively successful ball striker. You'll get the right delivery through the golf ball of your mechanics of your wrists and hands. And also you will create more natural power into the ball. So this is a real big one. If you want to hit the ball better, hit the ball further, and start to control that club face through that impact zone more successfully. So I hope you've enjoyed my look at lag and how we can improve your lag positions and feels. If you did, please click like and share the video. Also, please comment down below. That really helps the channel grow and it really helps me drive the channel in the direction that's going to make you watch more videos. Also, if you haven't already, please follow or subscribe and also hit the bell notification alongside it. That means YouTube tell you when I release a new video like this one today, which will help you improve your golf and lower your scores. Lastly, thank you for tuning in today at the Forest of Arden. Hope to see you back here real soon. Good luck with your golf in the meantime.